Hi there, today I'm going to introduce to you a new tool called Kahoot. Kahoot is a quiz-based game that allows kids to play a game or trivia-like format that leads to increased buy-in from the students and also allows you to collect formative assessment data at the same time. If you're new to Kahoot, you're going to first want to create an account. You're going to create an account by going to getkahoot.com and clicking on Get My Free Account. You'll need things like a username, an email address, and a password. Once you've created your account, you'll log in, and this is what it looks like when I log into my Kahoot account. Within Kahoot, I have three options. I can create a quiz, which is like a multiple choice trivia game. I can foster a discussion, which really isn't a discussion, it's more like a survey prompt. And I can also ask a survey of my student. Let's start by looking at what it looks like when I create a quiz for my students. First, it's going to ask me to give my quiz a name, and we're just going to call this example. Now, it's going to ask me for my first question. The great thing about Kahoot is that I can incorporate an image into my question. So for example, if I am a math teacher and we're learning about coordinates, I can import a picture of a coordinate grid directly into my question. Now as I scrolled up here, along with my coordinate grid, I also want to type in the actual question. So what are the coordinates of the grid below? Um, Kahoot also asks me to delineate points. If I don't want this to be included with points, I can choose a no point question. Um, you'll see the way that Kahoot is played is it's time based. So if you don't want kids to be quote unquote competitive with one another, you could do all your questions as no points. If you want to increase that competitiveness depending on the situation or the students you're working with, you can make this count for points. Um, and you'll see that the students are able to track their points as they play, which can really increase the uh, buy-in by the students. Um, you can also set a time limit. So again, if you want students to be thoughtful, maybe you set the time limit really high and do no points. Um, if you're just kind of looking for a quick review and maybe you're getting the kids excited about it, you could do points and you could do a quicker time limit. It really depends on you knowing your students and what they need. Now we scroll down and you've noticed that I've already incorporated the um, potential multiple choice answers for this question. It already marks each of them as incorrect. All you need to do as a teacher is mark the correct one by clicking as correct. Now let's click next. All right, there are a few things you have to answer for every quiz. You're going to give it a um, language. You can decide if you want this public, as in other people on Kahoot can use it or mark it private. And you also say what your audience is. The pieces below are optional. Lastly, it always asks for a, uh, a cover image, and this is completely optional. You can just skip that if you want to. Here, I can be done with my quiz, or I can edit, and I can add some more questions. Um, so let's say we want to add another question, and again, the great thing about this is that I can incorporate pictures. So let's say I'm teaching a science class, and I want my question to be, what part of the cell is the arrow pointing at? And again, we would go through the same steps that we did with that previous question. All right, I just completed my answers and my correct answer for that one. And let's add one more type of question. Now this, full disclosure, is experimental. Um, right now, Kahoot is working on developing your ability to incorporate YouTube video. Now I found a clip of the I Have a Dream speech and I could actually copy that link and incorporate it into my Kahoot. Now, I might ask a question like, what movement is this speech associated with? Um, and it's a great way to quiz my kids on an actual video that's going to be a little more engaging than maybe just a picture or a question on its own. Now again, um, Kahoot is very clear that this is an experimental feature, so it's something you're going to want to test before you actually use this with the kids. All right, now I've got my quiz all ready to go, and I've already set my settings. Um, I've opted out of doing an optional cover image, and now I am done. Now what do I do once I'm ready for my kids to play my quiz? I'm going to hit play now. If I were just logging in, I could click here where it says me, and there would be a number there of how many quizzes I have, and I could launch it from there as well. So here's my example quiz. Um, there's a few different options down below that you're going to want to take a look at. You can read through those. So let's launch it. And from here, there are just three things your kids need to do. They're going to go on a tablet or a laptop. Um, and so, for example, if they're on their iPads, you can have them go ahead and open up Safari. They're going to click on Kahoot.it. This is what it looks like. So simple. And they're going to input this code right here. 
When students input the game pin, they're also going to be asked to give you a nickname and you can instruct your kids on how you want them to name it. You're going to notice that I already had two players join. That's all I'm going to do for this example. As a teacher, I'll go ahead and hit play and it's going to load my quiz. Now up on the projector, the first question will pop up for kids to see. And it's also going to um, start the timer. So depending on what I set the timer as, each answer is associated with a color and a shape. On a student device, they're simply going to see the color and the shape. So they're going to need to look at the projector for the question and the image, and then look at their own device for the shape and the answer that they want to um, incorporate. So I'm going to enter a couple of answers as the kids. Now as a class, we're actually going to see what the class answered as a total. It's not going to be associated with names, but we'll be able to see how many kids answered correctly, how many kids answered which answer. On my own personal device as a student, I'm going to get immediate feedback on whether or not I answered the question correctly. Now here's one of my favorite features of Kahoot. After the kids have answered the question and we see how many have answered each one correctly, as a teacher I can click reshow image. So this is a great chance for us to discuss that image and actually talk about reteaching what the kids didn't understand and especially if there was a common misconception. At um, Martin Luther King video, and you're going to notice that it loads and the kids have time to see the question, they have time to listen to the video prior to inputting their answers. One thing to note is that once all of the people have answered, the video stopped and it went straight to the screen here where we can actually see the answers. All right, so in the end, the students get to see who won. Again, that's if you associate points. If you're not looking for an activity where you want the kids to be quote-unquote competitive, then you would just not assign points to the actual game. On the last screen, the great thing about this is I can actually download the results from my students. So if I have a PLC and I want to look at our common assessment data, I will have the results for the kids in my classroom regarding what they answered correctly, what they answered incorrectly, how many points they got, how quickly they were answering. All of that data can be talked about amongst your PLC partners. Now a good thing to know about this is that when I am in my Kahoot and my, my quizzes are all listed, I can actually create a quiz and then go ahead and share it with all of the people in my PLC. So that's a great way for you to do a quick, formative, common assessments. The last thing I'd like to point out about Kahoot is you can actually have students set up their own accounts. So if you have students go to getkahoot.com and click on get my free account, they can actually select themselves as a student over 16 or a student under 16 um, and then sign up for their own accounts. So imagine students creating their own quizzes in small groups and then structuring quiz-like games amongst groups to to review content and really take control of the assessments themselves. What a great way to put the control in the hands of the students and really engage them in the content. All right, so that's a quick introduction into Kahoot. Remember, Kahoot is a trivia and quiz game that allows you to really get buy-in from the students because they get so involved with collecting points. Um, they're able to see images and videos along with the questions, and you as a teacher are able to get quick formative assessment feedback from your students. Um, again, you have the option to adjust the time that kids have the answer. You have the option to adjust whether or not they get points, but it's really an interactive way for you to do some quick, um, you know, pulse checking on how your students are doing related to your content area.